Executive the order at 716. Roll call, please. Council Member uh, Bernhardt? Here. Council Member Mendoza? Here. Council Member Obiso Martinez? Here. Mayor Pro Tim Tucker? Here. And Mayor Alvarado? Here. Please down to the Pledge of Allegiance and you know the Please stand. Ready? Begin. That leads to the United States of America. Next year, the body of the Lord stands. Why they should find the God. May this is all for the fatigue of this Thank you. Um, Marina, we have any questions for the agenda? Uh, Mr. Mayor, we would ask, uh, we were expecting to receive. We anticipated, but we haven't yet received it. So we would ask that you uh, table item C2 for a future meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. With that, how about city attorney, any report on closed session? Yes, the city council met in closed session, discussed the public employee performance evaluation of the city manager, no reportable action. The council discussed a uh, conference with labor negotiator, uh, city manager, with each uh, addressing each employee organization, direction was given to the negotiator. Um, anticipated litigation, one item was discussed, no reportable action. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Well, moving on to public comment, there is a time limit of three minutes for anyone wishing to address the city council on these matters. And with that, matters not appearing on the agenda. If you wish to address the city council concerning any item within the city council's jurisdiction, please raise your hand and be acknowledged by the mayor. At that time, state your name, address uh, for the record. The mayor reserves the right to place a time limit of three minutes on each person's presentation. It is requested that longer presentations be submitted to the city clerk's office in writing 48 hours before the meeting. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, did we have any via email? No public comments via email. Thank you very much for that. Moving on to presentations. We're going to do a certificate of recognition from Ms. Karina Beltran. So from what I'm understanding, Ms. Karina Beltran uh, went to the uh, National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Yeah. and uh, did amazing, represented, represented our city of Imperial. So Karina, big congratulations and thank you. So if you'd like, I'd like to come forward to the microphone. It is open. And then uh, I'll do the certificate and we can come down and take pictures. Yeah, give her a word. I'm like, can I give her a word? No, I can't see that. <laughs> I'm afraid to give her a word because I might not know how to spell it. <laughs> like, yeah, you're right. No. Hi. Hi. Hello. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. You? Now we're doing good. I'm glad that you're here. And we all are, are glad that you're here. Thank you. And Can so you tell we, us about your experience when you went? That had to have been amazingly exciting. Um, it was a It was a fun experience. It was cool. And... Had a lot of activities, and the competition itself was fun too. And yeah, how many people did you compete against? Two hundred forty-five. Wow. wow! Can you wow. tell me the word that you won with? Here in the county, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter either one. Um, Which what was the hardest word you had that helped you win the competition? Probably. My winning, my winning word was obnoxious. I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's that's a that's a good word there. You say my your mom was my son's teacher, and she might have described him as obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations! And so we do have a certificate to issue you, and it says a certificate of recognition proudly presented to Karina Beltran. Uh, for winning the 19th Annual Regional Imperial County Spelling Bee and for representing Imperial Valley at the 2024 Scripps National Spelling Bee in Washington, D.C. Congratulations on the remarkable achievement. So congratulations. Thank you. So as we'll go down here, but we'll take a picture. Thank you, Kristen. The emblem looks wonderful over there. Thank you, Public <laughs> Services. We now have the photos back. Yeah. Yay! Yes. Yay! <laughs> oh, that does look so pretty. <laughs> yeah. 
Ooh, I love getting the shoes. It's just a cha cha. And yeah, I can't see them. They're like Langdon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh no, with those shoes. They're long term. They're for cheap. Oh, that's so good. Makes me happy. Yeah, makes me happy to see it. All right, thank you. And so moving on, our proclamation a presentation for National Parks and Recreation Month. Uh, so we have a City of Imperial Proclamation for Parks and Recreation Month. So we do see our Parks and Rec staff here. It says, whereas Parks and Recreation is an integral part of the communities throughout our country and the City of Imperial, and whereas this year's theme is Where You Belong and celebrates the many parks and recreational professionals, recreation professionals across the country, Across the country foster a sense of belonging in their community by providing essential service and activities for all ages and abilities and whereas parks and recreation promotes promotes health and wellness by improving the physical and mental health of all community members and whereas the activities that are provided by our parks and recreation divisions such as summer camps youth sports signature series events contribute greatly to the quality of life in our community and whereas the city of imperial City Council recognizes the importance derived from parks and recreation resources and express our sincere appreciation to our Imperial Parks and Recreation Division. Therefore, now, now therefore, I, the Mayor, Robert Amparano, on behalf of the Imperial City Council, do hereby proclaim the month of July 2024 as Parks and Recreation Month in the City of Imperial, passed and adopted on this third day of July 2024 at a regular meeting of the Imperial City Council. So, congratulations. Uh, good job. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, uh, parks team put together a, just a really short uh, slide uh, show for the council and for the public. So uh, we'll play that and then we'll go through the motions. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. That is great. Hi, everyone. So you probably noticed that we, um, if it wasn't going by too quickly, you probably noticed that we added a um, new event to our lineup of our signature event series. It's called Carnival. We did receive a lot of interest um, from vendors and from different people in the community, um, hoping that we could add another downtown event to our lineup and so that's what we've come up with carnival it's going to be like a, a 
fun, exciting um, Brazilian carnival type theme. Um, so hopefully everyone enjoys it. Thank you. Any questions? I didn't notice the date. When was that one? Um, February 22nd. Oh. Uh -huh. Cool. I didn't um, notice the blues, brews, and barbecues it on it. It wasn't on there? Yeah, okay. so it's the last one of the oh, okay. event series. It'll be March 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, you got any other questions? For our summer um, programs, we also wanted to mention, you guys probably saw the slide, um, but July 12th, we'll be having our dive-in movie at the pool, um, but we're also going to be celebrating the city's 120th um, birthday, so we would like to invite um, all members of the council, if you guys want to come out, we will be handing out free cupcakes to celebrate the city's birthday um, to all the attendees, so it's going to be free to the public if you guys would like to join us, um, and then we'll also be having our end of summer bash again on August 9th. Both of those events are from 7 to 10 at the Imperial Pool. Nice. What was the date of the first, the anniversary? July 12th. July 12th. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions with that? Okay, so we'll meet you guys down there. So once again, thank you to all the staff for all the good event, great events that we have. So with that, moving on to our presentations, we have our nine, um, Imperial Valley 9-11 uh, stair climb presentation. So. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, city council members, uh, community members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, this evening. My name is Carlos Pitones. Uh, behind me is Edgar Quinones. We are members of the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb Committee. Our committee is formed of members that represent the fire community, the law enforcement community, and public and private organizations who are dedicated to ensuring that the Imperial Valley never forgets September 11, 2001. We do this by hosting a memorial stair climb that honors, respects, and pays tribute to the 343 FDNY firefighters, the 60 law enforcement personnel, and the 10 emergency medical personnel who made the ultimate sacrifice as a result of the terrorist attacks on that Tuesday morning in 2001. This year marks the 23rd anniversary of September 11th. And for us here in the Imperial Valley, we will host the 11th annual 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb event our event will be held at the grandstands of the Imperial Valley Fairgrounds on Saturday, September 7th, 2024. The memorial ceremony will begin at 7.45 p.m., followed by our stair climb at 8 p.m. Our memorial stair climb is a way for the community to come together to remember the heroes who made the ultimate sacrifice on September 11th. Each participant climbs or walks the equivalent of 110 stories of the World Trade Center, carrying the name and photo of a fallen hero to symbolically complete their climb. At this time, I'd like to share a quick video of our event. This land is yours.
So early registration for our participants is now open. It's $25 through September 6th. And there will be an on-site registration for $35 on the day of the event starting at 6 p.m. Part participants that register before August 23rd will be able to receive their event t-shirt on the day of the event. Uh, registration can be completed at our website, which is www.iv911.org. In addition to Stericline participants, we are also seeking sponsors and vendors to join us in making our event as successful as possible. Sponsorship opportunities come in four different levels, ranging from $343, $413, $911, and $2,001. And each level is significant uh, due to $343 fallen firefighters, 413 is the total firefighters, uh, law enforcement personnel and emergency medical personnel, 9-11 for the date, and 2001 for the year. The different degrees of, of, um, of sponsorships are also determined with advertisement, different types of advertisements, uh, event memorabilia, and sponsorship dinner invitations as well. In addition to sponsors, we're also seeking vendors. Vendors can register for our event at no charge, but will agree to donate 10% of their earnings during the event to the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial and Stair Climb event. Funds raised for this event will go to the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial Stair Climb 501c3 that will provide charitable assistance to local firefighters and their families, promote scholarship opportunities for the members of the community, and will assist in the development of the Imperial Valley 9-11 Memorial as well. In closing, I want to thank you again for this opportunity to present this information. We invite everyone from the Imperial Valley to come out, whether it is as a spectator, a, spectator, a participant, a sponsor, or a vendor, we appreciate the assistance in having the Imperial Valley observe and remember this special day. Thank you for your time. I'll open up for any questions if you have any. Thank you. Any questions? No. I don't know. Maybe we can. I know in years past, we Imperial has created a team. I don't know if we can do that again. Um, maybe something we can do to compete against our other cities that are always there. So I don't know if we can do that. I, I think our uh, engagement committee is looking into uh, uh, attempting to put together okay. a team. I appreciate that. Thank you again for your time, and we hope to see you on September 7th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. All right. With that, we'll move on to uh, our item B, our consent agenda. So as all items appearing under the consent agenda will be acted upon by the city council with one motion without discussion. Does any council member or any other person request that items be considered separately, that item will be taken up at that time determined by the mayor. So, so moved. Second. Got a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries five zero. All right. With that, we're moving on to action items uh, C. Uh, C1, removal of crosswalk on South Imperial Avenue between 4th and 5th Street. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Fernando Williams, our engineer tech will present to the city. Good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor and Council Members. I'm Fernando Williams from the Community Development Department, and I'm going to be presenting to you this item, uh, which is the removal of the crosswalk directly in front of City Hall along South Imperial Avenue between 4th Street and 5th Street. Part of our comprehensive effort within the department to enhance our infrastructure in transportation, uh, we did an assessment of the crosswalk directly in front of City Hall. And given that the safety of the people transiting our cities, or our streets, sorry, within the city, 
uh, we did a thorough uh, analysis on whether to keep it or removing it. One of the first impacts that will uh, come with either the maintaining or keeping the crosswalk is the parking. Uh, if we choose to remove this uh, crosswalk here, we would have uh, additional parking along the east side of South Imperial Avenue in front of the city hall. And if we choose to keep it instead of removing it, due to uh, the Assembly Bill 413, which effectively bans 20 feet of parking uh, bo on both ends of the crosswalk, we would lose three parking spaces. So by keeping this crosswalk, we would have to eliminate two parking spaces to the south and one to the north. And if we choose to remove this crosswalk, we would have two more parking spaces uh, where the, it is currently located. That's regarding the, the parking on South Imperial Avenue. Also, one thing to consider is the infrastructure modification that will come with this uh, removal or maintaining of the crosswalk. Because if we, if we opt to remove this crosswalk, we would have to just simply remove the depressed curb where people cross on the ramp and, re and replace it with cross gutter, vertical curb, curb and gutter. And choosing to maintain this crosswalk Currently, it is not an ADA compliant crosswalk because there's no ramp on the west side of that crosswalk. So we would have to modify it and build a new one, impacting also the residents who live in front of that uh, crosswalk. And regarding the accesses, access points, sorry, people already have access through the corner on 4th Street. So there's an ADA ramp where, where people can access to the city hall or to the parking lot that's uh, north of City Hall. The estimated cost for removing this crosswalk would be about $850, and the estimated cost for keeping this crosswalk, which entails building the other part of the crosswalk, would be an estimated of $4,195. As part of our assessment, we search for community feedback, especially from the neighbors that live directly on the west side of Southern Pearl Avenue. And the general consensus was that there was no opposition to removing the crosswalk. There was one resident which we couldn't lo locate and get their feedback despite multiple efforts. And there was one comment also, but that resident was not a fan of the diagonal parking in general. Uh, but other than that, uh, people were not opposing to us removing this, this crosswalk. Uh, another important factor is that this project would be uh, categorically exempt from the CEQA Act because it's just a minor alteration to existing facilities. And on June 12, 2024, the Traffic Commission recommended the removal of the crosswalk. The staff recommendation, the staff recommendation would be, based on these findings, to remove this crosswalk in front of City Hall. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for that questions? report. Any questions? You said there's another, I'm looking at Google Maps because I'm visual. Uh, yeah. Where would be the next available crosswalk for that area? It would be on, on the south uh, in Fort by the police? Fort Street. Yeah, by okay. the police, by the police station. Okay. And also there, there's ADA access on the parking lot that's in directly north of uh, City Hall. It's not a marked crosswalk, though, correct? Uh, I see it, the it's, yeah, it's not marked, ring, yeah. But yeah. it's not like the it, No, it, it's okay. not. It's not painted. OK. My only question. Any other questions? No question. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, got a motion a second. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're, we'll table C2 to another time. Moving on to 
item C3. Mr. Mayor, uh, before you proceed, I'm going to be recusing myself from items C3 and C4. Okay. And it's just based on location that we're being extra cautious. They're going to just step out for these two items and then come back. We'll vote without them. Oh, you can. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So we'll let the record reflect that uh, Council Member Mendoza and Council Member Burnworth will be stepping out for items C3 and C4. Okay. So that C3 is uh, awarded an agreement for labor compliance consulting for the 71014 Street Rehabilitation Project on number P2020. 4 02 and then Mr. Mora. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member, as soon as you guys will present the next two items. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, this uh, agenda item is regarding our 7th, 10th, and 14th Street uh, Rehabilitation Project and uh, is uh, regarding to award a contract for labor compliance and consulting services um, to labor compliance consultants of Southern California. Uh, but you may be aware uh, our project is now moving forward and the part of the process is to have a, a company, a labor compliance company uh, to monitor and enforce compliance with federal and state prevailing wages in, in, in this kind of project. Um, the, the city, not the city, but our department uh, run a um, request for proposal from companies, local and non-local companies. We publish the request for proposals on the website and we sent uh, emails to eight companies we know we have been working with them before for labor compliance. We received two uh, proposals, one for labor compliance consultants of Southern California, 7,200, and South Start Engineering Consultants for uh, $8,900 roughly. Uh, the, um, the the funding is going to be coming from measure LTA measure D is B1 in, in uh, wastewater, and uh, we are recommending to award the contract to uh, the, this is the long name Labor Compliance Consultants of Southern California LLC. I'm here for any questions, if any. Any questions, Mr. Tucker? No, but I'll make a motion to approve. Ms. Obeso Martinez, any questions? None. I'll second the motion. Okay. Got a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll move on to item C4. Change order for 71014 Street Rehabilitation Project, bid number 2024 01. Mr. Mora. Okay. Yeah, I'll present it as well. Uh, this item is a change order to install a little bit over 3,000 uh, linear feet of 12-inch PVC water main along 14th Street. Um, we already start the construction of the of the project, and part of the uh, the process is to to put hole for existing uh, underground utilities. Uh, we knew. Uh, there are four and six inch water mains along 14th Street. Uh, but based on the experience we had on 11th Street, uh, we should be really sure about the condition and depth of the water main. So the what we didn't know or we discovered in this spot hauling process is that the pipeline is not only a small size, but it's a asbestos cement pipe, which is a very, very old pipe. This type of pipe was stop uh, available for construction early 1980s, which is giving us an age approximately 80, 45 to 50 years old, which is the life of this kind of pipe. So a combination of many factors. Um, in addition, the uh, master plan for water is recommending the installation of 12 inch water pipeline along 13th Street. After a conversation, uh, internal conversation, we agree that it would be a good opportunity to start not only to uh, remove or not use any more asbestos cement uh, pipeline, but to increase the capacity, capacity of the area, uh, installing this pipe, which is going to make uh, a water loop 
from the uh, west side of the city under Highway 86 and connecting to a pipeline that is going north-south on the east side of Highway 86. Um, we run some numbers and the change order is for $1,280,000, which is going to be coming from water funds. Uh, this is, uh, although this is a change order to the contract, this is an item not part of the scope of work as the project is for surface uh, rehabilitation. It's just the combination of adverse situation that is actually um, having us to propose this as a really good opportunity to save some money in the future, remove um, asbestos cement pipe as part of the inventory of the city, and not create an additional inconvenience to the residents if we install it along 13th Street. I'm here for any question, if any. Any questions? Mr. I'm Cook. just glad you're doing it while they're Correct. there and not going to tear up the road yeah. two months after they <laughs> finish it. Uh -huh. So, yeah, good job. So, a question, a couple questions, and, and uh, you know I'm not a fan of change orders, but the, the change order on this one is actually, I agree with what Mr. Tucker says, is that it's being done prior to us paving the road. So that that is a good catch. But to add to that, are we going to be doing any other, are we looking at any, any other street improvements, modifications, curb gutter, anything like that that needs to be done with a new road, whether we're going to put signage, you know, I know we have traffic issues, I know maybe looking at speed bumps, something that we can do in advance while we're already there. Uh, we haven't looked at any of the options for traffic mitigation measures on 7, 10, and 14. Uh, we haven't, I don't remember having received any um, complaints, issues, or any traffic accidents in the location, uh, but we can look at that um, right after this meeting. Um, see if we can add um, uh, some of those items that were just mentioned. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I mean, would've... we have a park there. I mean, I'm pretty sure that we, we can look at stuff like that. I know 7th has an issue with traffic coming out of the schools. And I mean, I'm just look, trying to look forward because if we're already going to be in there, we might as well get it all done at once. Yeah, we'll take a look at the, uh, the signage, especially stop signs. I think by the park, we have four-way stops on most mm -hmm. sections. Um, maybe not so much at the southwest corner of the Eager Park, um, but it's, which is not part of this project. But no. we'll, we'll look at that, and, and that's a good catch. 7th Street, might, once it's um, rehab, yes. we might have a freeway. <laughs> right. So... And so, I, like I said, I'm not saying make changes, but I, I definitely if we can look at it because, I mean, going back and after the fact is kind of heartbreaking. You tear up new asphalt. Yes. So, right. Any other questions? No. I'll make a motion to approve. Got a motion? Second. Please vote. Motion carries three zero. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Can we bring back. We can bring back. Our base. All right. Welcome back. We're on item C five. Establishment of four classification salary ranges and job descriptions for accountant, building officials, cybersecurity administrator, and fleet and, fleet and facilities supervisor. And this is Christian Smith, human resources manager. Uh, so in front of you is an item to approve for the creation of four job descriptions and positions. However, we will be pulling the building official position from this item. Uh, we will be going back and reviewing departmental needs and um, bringing a revised request back at a later date. However, we would like to move forward with the accountant position at range 75 for the finance department, the cybersecurity administrator, that's a rate salary range 86 for the information technology department and the fleet and facility supervisor position at salary range 85 for the public services department. Uh, with the 
Uh, the initial fiscal impact for this position, these positions was $457,938.69. With the removal of the building official, that total changes to $323,259.25. Uh, these positions were accounted for in the budget that you'll be reviewing this evening as well. Uh, and the need for the positions uh, we had previously discussed as well at the budget workshop last week um, and also the backup uh, attached to the agenda item goes into uh, additional details. Um, all of these positions will fall under the MSPC unrepresented uh, uh, division. Um, I will stand for any questions you have. All right. Thank you for that. Any questions? I'll make a motion to approve the accounting um, cyber security administration and the fleet and facility supervisor. Yep, got a motion. Second. Two seconds, please vote. Motion carries five zero. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. With that, we'll move on to C6, receive and file the independent city audit in fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. Uh, Mr. Manriquez with Administrative Services. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, before you, uh, item C6, it's um, the unmodified audit opinion of the city financial statements as they were audited by CPA firm Moss, Levy, and um, Artsheim. Arts, Artsheim. Um, and we have the consultant online uh, if we have any particular questions about it's a hundred page audit document you have in front of you. And we'll stand for any questions. Okay. Is there a rundown you can give us besides what the hundred uh, pages that we're that are here? I, uh, any I, findings, have, some actually? I have some highlights um, I can go over if you wish. I'd appreciate that. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, so um so let me start by saying like victor already mentioned our opinion um is unmodified so that's the highest opinion that we auditors issue financial statements so what's colloquially known as a clean opinion um the only unfortunate thing is the timing but we're we're working with john and victor to try to get caught up as soon as we can i think we're making great strides to that effect um so with that being said let me just go over some you know high level financial highlights for the year and it's you know fortunately it's all good news so on the government wide side so this includes long term assets long term liabilities of the city as a whole for governmental activities so this is all the funds not including water and wastewater um assets exceeded liability by approximately 46 million dollars and that's an increase of 3 million dollars over the prior fiscal year and uh, business type activity increased similarly 3.4 million to a total of 27 million dollars. The general fund, uh, which you know it's very important to a lot of councils, um, the fund balance increased 3.2 million dollars, so it almost doubled to 7.7 .7 million. And now the general fund reserve, which is the um, unassigned general fund fund balance divided by the current year's um, general fund expenditure. It's 60% as it stands right now. So um, that basically means you can operate for almost two thirds of a year on reserves alone. So that's very healthy for um, any city, uh, 60%. Uh, typically, you know, we see numbers in the 30% range. Um, the only caveat is that since Imperial is a smaller city, the 60% is a big ratio. However, you know, one large emergency, like, you know, you guys were talking about change orders on a street repair and it's a million dollars. So things like that can quickly deplete that reserve. So, you know, it's it's a good thing to have, but, you know, it's it's um, prudent to continue uh, financial, cons you know, being cons financially conservative in the future. Um, the only update as far as disclosure goes is that GASB 6871 for pension, um, the net pension liability decreased about $2 million um, in this fiscal year. So we're, everything we've been talking about is fiscal year ended June 30th, 2022. It went from about four point something to 2.2 million. And um, the, the decrease is basically the total pension hasn't changed 
drastically. What's changed is the fiduciary net position. So what's being presented in the 2022 fiscal year reflects market conditions in the 2021 fiscal year. So I'm sure everybody's you know, remembers 2021 was kind of a banner year for the stock market. So all the all of CalPERS um, investments in their per C uh, investment pool increased drastically. So that net pension liability is almost half. However, when you're looking at next year's financials, you'll see that some of this decrease reverses due to market conditions in 2022. But then again, in 2024, it reverses again. And it's actually they're doing better than ever at this point, um, as far as I'm aware. Um, the only future disclosure item that we're going to be reviewing in the next fiscal year is GASB 87 and 96 related to um, leases. So recording um, right to use assets and 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 uh, deferred inflows for lease receivables and something similar for payable. So that's something that we'll discuss when we're presenting next year's financials. So that's that's all I had. Any questions or comments? Um, I mean, I'll give you, uh, you know, Victor and I and John will give you time to uh, uh, digest all the details. And if you have any questions right now or any more detailed questions at a later time, please feel free to field them to us and we'll give, be able to give you a detailed response. Thank you. I would like to add something, Victor, if that's OK. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so briefly, we're, we're 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 presenting the the final independent audit for fiscal year 2022. Um, we're also working on fiscal year 2023 and fiscal year 2024 just ended on Friday, uh, just this last week. So um, we've got multiple years here and I think we've been supporting Victor to hopefully get through 2023 and 2024 caught up, hopefully by the end of the year. And, and uh, I guess Ben, ben it's, has been uh, working hard to try to set up a schedule to allow us to do that. But just one more observation uh, from the standpoint of positive news, if you look at the cash position for the general fund, uh, $6.2 .6 million there on page eight of the independent audit. Um, June 30th, 2023, it goes up to $7.9 million. And then in uh, 2024, uh, it, it even goes up from there. So um, there, there's been very positive news from that standpoint, but uh, there's been some added expenses and so forth that'll change the picture a little bit in 2025. But nonetheless, uh, as we've been saying, uh, that the city's uh, been very uh, conservatively fiscally prudent. And um, I think it's reflected in the audit report. Thank you, John. Any questions from the council? All right, so with that. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Okay, got a motion. Second. And a second, please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. All right, moving on to, thank you, John, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Victor. So moving on to item C7, the approved resolution number 2024-48 establishing the GAN, uh, GAN spending limit for 2020 fiscal year 2025. And Mr. Manriquez. Uh, Mayor, Council, again, um, this is a resolution um, back from uh, Proposition 4, 1979. This is to establish spending limits to the City of Council, City Imperial um, for adopting appropriations limit for fiscal year June ending June 30, 2025. Um, as it stands currently, um, the limit, the calculation is prior year appropriation times inflation uh, times um, population, population increase. So given that um, the last year appropriations, fiscal year appropriation for 22 was 21 million um, 528,000. We multiply it by the increase in population, uh, which we have as based on the California Department of Finance at 2.59 and the inflation at 3.62%. The adjustment increase would come at 1.3, 556,291 dollars. 
bringing appropriations limit to twenty-two million eight hundred eighty-four dollars seven hundred and twelve dollars. Uh, we're way currently uh, way under this limit. Uh, the figure for this year would be eight million nine hundred twenty-one thousand seven hundred dollars, which would be um, in compliance with the GAN uh, spending limit. So with that, I have any any particular questions. Um, Answer. Any questions from the council? Why is it be below? We'll spend a lot. <laughs> below our the estimated. The estimated that what we're spending <laughs> that that's actually what we're trying to spend the, our budget. So we should be way below the the limits. So that's general, just including the general fund um, city hall part. So it's just a section. We don't include everything. Okay. And Thank Victor, can, can I add one moment, one uh, comment ahead, to Doc. that? Thank you. Yeah. So, so our general fund budget is about the $17 million. That's the next item on the agenda. Uh, so you're, you're saying, well, if the entire $17 million general fund budget was funded by taxes and only taxes, um, we'd still be below the limit of 22 million. Um, the, the GAN calculation doesn't include the entire $17 million general fund budget as what they call proceeds of taxes. The entire $17 million general fund budget is not all subject to the spending limit because a big part of the general fund budget is funded by fees and charges. And uh, there's some uh, indirect uh, um, service charges. Uh, so the proceeds of taxes Whatever part of the general fund is funded just by taxes, property taxes, sales taxes, uh, certain state subventions that we get, those are the only, uh, that's the only part of the general fund budget that's actually subject to that limit. So that's why we only have 8.9 million of our $17 million general fund budget. That's the only piece that's subject to this GAN spending limit. Um, so just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joe. Any other question? Uh, approved resolution number 2024-48, establishing the GAN spending limit for 2025. All right, got that motion. Second. Second, please vote. Motion carries five zero. All right. Thank you, John. Thank you, Thank Victor. You. Uh, moving on to item C eight, approved resolution number twenty twenty four dash forty seven, adopting the municipal budget for fiscal year twenty twenty five. Mr. Marquez. Mayor, Council, um, bringing back the uh, the uh, budget we re reviewed in the previous two sessions, uh, made the adjustments from the special meeting. Um, to the line items that were indicated. Uh, right now, um, we're presenting the whole budget. Uh, it includes general fund, uh, special funds, water fund, wastewater fund, CFD funds, RDA, successor agency, the information technology fund, the CIP budget rollover, and the last attachments was the org charts, which would not be adjusted based on the previous item at C5. So that would be the only adjustment for the budget would be excluding the already budgeted amount for the building official. Any With that, I don't know if, if we would have any additional questions or particular questions to any of the attachments. Any, nope. any questions from the council? <laughs> We're good. All right. If We're good. I'll make a motion. Got a motion for Mr. Tucker. Senator 2024-47, Dothan Municipal Budget for Fiscal Year 2025. Got a second from Ms. Burnworth. Please vote. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. With that, um, we now have a budget. 
So we'll move on to E for reports. We'll start with E1 for our department reports, and we'll start with Mr. Mora. Um, quick report on Neckel Road reopen, and we're getting there on the hotel. Uh, it's almost completed. Nice. Um, hopefully they open in, they said about two more weeks. Uh, they will open the first floor only, and, and well, we'll see. Uh, they're working very, very hard to complete. There's a lot of improvements going on there. And on on 10th Street, uh, we have to be moving a lot of uh, curb and gutter. We pour some curb and gutter as well, so we'll be keeping those heavy. On 7th and 10th and uh, 14th. Just while I, you're talking about it, I got some complaints from residents saying that they weren't notified um, about the construction going on which I'm assuming they were, but. Um, yes, um, notices were delivered. Uh, we posted notices on the curve and gutter, um, but we'll make an extra effort on Thank that. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have to say, you were talking about the hotel. My daughter and I were driving around and to come down Imperial Avenue and be able to look that way and the hotel had all the lights on. It was like, oh, it actually is happening. <laughs> you know? They had all the, the room lights lit mm -hmm. up and everything. It was, it was exciting to see that. Finally We're finally happened. getting yeah. to the end of this. To the end of the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Or light at Hardly the end of the road? The end of Imperial <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> oh. Good sight. Thank you, Mr. Mora. Mr. Lopez? So just to echo what uh, Nancy and Victoria were saying earlier, um, check your emails. Uh, you will be getting an invite from one of the two of them for next Friday. Uh, as you well know, uh, it's the city's 120th birthday. It officially, it's probably, it's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually on the day. Oh. Uh, so it just coincided with, with what we're doing at the pool already. So we figured we'd pass out some goodies uh, for free to the public. And we would love to have the council there to kind of put you guys to work a little bit uh, in the heat. So <laughs> if you can come in on by, bring your swim gear or your hydration because it's going to be a hot one. <laughs> Friday. So uh, the, the next thing is just want to, I know it's Parks and Rec Month, but uh, we couldn't do what we do without uh, all the other departments that are involved, <laughs> especially in special events and different things. So I want to uh, give a shout out to not only the Parks and Rec team, but everybody else that's involved uh, citywide, because these, these events and different things really take, it's a, it's a huge undertaking for everybody that's, that's uh, participating or working it. So uh, thanks to everybody that uh, that helps us out during that process. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Mr. Stra? I don't have anything to to report. However, I just want to say thank you for the cybersecurity administrator position approved. It's going to be very helpful for the city. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Real? Good evening, Mayor. Um, just one thing. Last Friday, we, our cadet program, they spent the entire week in San Diego. There was 193, I believe, that had started. They graduated 181. All seven of ours started, and all seven of them finished. Yay. Yeah. Um, a special shout out to Sergeant Corona Hernandez, Officer Salazar Bustamante Reyes, and with an emphasis on Officer Fierro, who spent the entire week up there ensuring that the kids had all the things that they needed. It was a the the graduation was outstanding. It was gigantic, and I was extremely surprised. Good to hear, and congratulations. Yeah. Um, maybe one of these meetings we can bring the cadets over and we get to meet them. So they're probably really tired. <laughs> <laughs> so they'll, they'll be back on the no. 24th. So that we could certainly anticipate a date where we would present them for you. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Chief Lancer. Good evening. Um, so Imperial Valley sent a strike team uh, to the Thompson Fire in Butte County. Um, Alpatria. Flexco Engine, Calipatria Personnel, Holtville, El Centro, Imperial County, and then an Inyo County engine is going to meet up with them to form up. So a strike team is five engines of the same type. Uh, these are brush rigs, what we call type threes, uh, with a leader, um, a chief officer who is Chief Silva from Holtville. So just informational on that. Um, also, um, you've probably been seeing in the news, it's, it's going to be getting excessively hot. Um, we're talking one teens up to 120 depending on where you're at. Um, of course, being out on the asphalt and working, you know, the temperature can be, you know, even more than that. Those of us who have worked out there 
uh, with that uh, understand that so uh, just caution to everyone um, stay away from the heat as much as you can and if you can't avoid it stay hydrated thank you appreciate it thank you Marikas? um first of all thank you for the budget and uh, patience on this process um i know for next year the, we already discussed coming up with a different uh uh, schedule for you guys so you don't have everything at, at, at one meeting so for that uh, that's on me and uh, expect something uh, better for next year thank you get it Ms. Smith uh, I'd like to welcome three new hires in the last two weeks uh, so we'll go ahead and get the slideshow up for you and for uh, we'd like to introduce Jaden Alvarez lifeguard one uh, for parks and recreation uh, and then we have Viviana Eliza Barajas. She's a literacy coordinator uh, for the library. And we have Jalen Gutierrez, a recreation leader three for the library for um, lunch at the library. And if you see them around, please give them a, a big warm welcome. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Ms. Guerrero? Yes, I actually have something this time. Uh, good news, we have some of our COVID project reimbursements finally trickling in. So we've gotten a few checks for that, so that's good news. Um, we received our award letter for the Permanent Local Housing Authority for the PLHA. So we got that going. We submitted our certification that we accept the terms. So we had the 10 days to do that. We're waiting for our agreement, and that'll help us with the rehabilitation of our apartments. And then the last thing I have is our efforts to Washington paid off. We got a notice that we're going to be getting $850,000 from Ruiz for our community park. So awesome. that was what I have. I don't know if you guys have any questions, if you want any more information. Do you know what type of work will be done with that funding? With which one? The $850,000. Um, we're thinking, we've been talking, we can probably use it to do the design, engineering, get plans and specs and things like that, get something shovel ready so once we can get more of the funding trickling in and get the overall amount to actually do the project. So that's our main idea is to use it for that. But if we find other, you know, avenues for it, or if we can, you know, internally discuss, that's what we're going to look to do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, with, how about our uh, city attorney? Oh, nothing to report. All right, we'll move on to our city manager. Uh, yes, council, just want to wish everybody a happy fourth, a, a safe and sane fourth. And just a reminder to folks that this the city ordinance does allow discharge of safe and sane fireworks. We discourage use of the other sort of fireworks and there, there will be uh, police presence to uh, remind folks about uh, illegal fireworks. Thank you. Appreciate that. Then we'll start with our city clerk. Nothing to add. All right. How about we go to this side, Ms. Obesa Martinez? Um, my other hat um, dropped off, the Mana de Imperial Valley dropped off two pellets, like big pellets into the cooling centers, water bottles. So those are available for people who might need them. They dropped them off with the County of Imperial Fire Department today. So... They have a lot of water over there. Yes. It'll be dispersed out, I'm sure, to all the different cooling stations. And it's hot. That's Drink it. your water. Or stay inside if you can. Yeah. Get out of town. Get out of town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have a happy 4th of July. Hopefully everybody stays out of uh, hospitals and emergency rooms. All right. Ms. I have Burnwood? nothing to report. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. Uh -oh. Ms. Uh, Mendoza? Um, just nothing necessarily to report, but I could, would like to ask if we can ensure that all the information on the cooling centers are put out on our social media, given the upcoming weather. We want to make sure that information is available for the public. Yes, I, see, I, I, I believe we were, uh, we've were we done that, but I'll make sure. Uh, if I can make a comment, we did. We went ahead and posted it. We have it up. Library is going to okay. be our cooling center, and we have the operation hours Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., which is Monday through Thursday and Friday. It's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Thank we you. We also let them know on our Facebook and our Instagram the other cooling centers and gave them a link to the public health. I believe that will have all the additional information. Thank you so much. Can you send us that link? I know that I had a couple uh, 
from IB Press was that's important. Appreciate it. Mr. Tucker? I'm good. Thank you. Good. All right. And last but not least, I know that uh, last week I was able to attend our ICTC, our local Imperial County Transportation Commission, and there was a couple of projects that were awarded. I know the City of Imperial filed for one of the projects, and if I remember right, it was in the round of $2 million mark, if I remember around there, the 86. So we applied for the 86 project for $2 million, and there's $16 million in the there's We applied for 10 Okay, because there's 16 million in the pot. That, uh, and that yeah, and if I remember right, only uh, five cities. Or there's only five projects in there, so we actually have a pretty good chance of getting a, a decent amount out of that. Um, and with that, uh, last Friday, uh, our city manager, Mr. Morita, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem Tucker, and myself met with IID in talks with uh, just general talks over City of Imperial IID business and. Uh, Everything, everything it went well. So definitely look forward to more talks like that. So with that, wish everybody a great 4th of July. Please be safe. Um, like we said, stay cool. Stay really cool, especially make sure you watch your pets. Um, and uh, thank you guys for all the hard work. And with that, I'll adjourn this meeting at 817.